Yes, it's time for the big question in which we tackle a major news story of the day. Tonight, addressing Labour's London Regional Conference, Sir Keir Starmer outlined how he has transformed his own party. Never again will Labour fail to grasp that economic stability is the foundation of our ambitions. Never again will Labour allow hate to spread unchallenged. We've changed our party and we're ready to change Britain. So that's tonight's big question. Has Labour changed under Sir Keir Starmer? Would they change Britain for the better? Has he reinvented his party in the way that Tony Blair did in the 1990s? To debate this, I'm delighted to welcome former Conservative government minister, best-selling author and television personality... Anne Widdicombe, and former Labour Minister for Europe and political commentator, Dennis McShane. Hi, Dennis. Welcome back to the show. Has Labour changed under Keir Starmer? Wow, yes. I mean, if you actually read uh, the Labour blogs, the poor left wing, my old mates, are tearing their hair out. They have finally been told this country is not up for a radical left very socialist program, and we've got perfectly competent leader, uh, not dramatic, no drama, Starmer, who just set in hand cleaning up a lot of the self-evident mistakes. I mean, culminating today, this ludicrous business. I think, I mean, Anne, you, you're in government, I was in government. The idea that some advisor of the government has to rush in his report at midnight, type it out double quick, and then the Prime Minister uses it to fire a man he expressed full confidence in. I mean, it's just never been seen before in British politics. I mean, the Tories, frankly, are in a pretty bad way at the moment. However, Dennis, focusing on Labour for the moment, does Keir Starmer have the X factor? Does he have Tony Blair's charisma? He's not uh, a superstar in, in, in the sense that Tony Blair became. I mean, to begin with, Tony Blair was described as Bambi by the Tories. Many on the left of the Labour Party didn't really rate him. But he's just calmly explained what he thought needed to be done, and his explanation was accepted by the country. And in a very different way, if you like, a bit like Joe Biden in the United States, steady and sure, we're past the Flash Harry moment in politics, the Berlusconi's, the Boris Johnson's, the, the sort of drama queens, the drama kings, and people just want competent, steady management taking decisions, you know, in the broad best interests of the country. Joe Biden, steady and safe. Pull the other one. No, on the contrary. I mean, on the very contrary, Mark. I know Anne's laughing away. I mean, I, it's a Daily Telegraph on speed. The plain fact is that Biden unbelievably kept control of the Senate, which no other president's done midterm. Uh, he's got very low unemployment, better growth. He's got some stuff that a lot of people don't like. It's called the uh, for uh, Industrial Relations Reform Act. He's facing down Putin. Uh, I, you know, if I had a penny or two, I would, I would, I would put it on Biden uh, winning or holding the White House at the next U.S. presidential election. Just wait and see. Well, I suppose pigs might fly. Um, Dennis, you're entitled to your view, but, Anne, let's focus on Labour. I think Dennis reveals a lot in his answers. He's not that keen to talk about Labour, and that wasn't exactly a ringing endorsement of the leader, was it? No, and, I mean, any comparison with Biden is farcical. I mean, Biden is senile. Uh, and the idea that he's going to uh, win his next election... Uh, I think, is, uh, is far-fetched. However, let's concentrate on this country. Let's concentrate uh, on Starmer. First of all, he is in hock to the unions, and he hasn't said anything about how he's going to cope uh, with strikes. Secondly, he has got no clear policy at all on immigration, which is now uh, on illegal immigration, which is now a uh, serious concern uh, for pretty well everybody in the country. Uh, he's got no policies uh, for getting rid of woke and getting the country back to common sense. In fact, he's adding to woke. He doesn't apparently know what a woman is, can't define a woman. Oh. And as I always point out, although uh, I'm aware that a lot of people have lost sight of this, it was he who, when he was running the Crown Prosecution Service, 
began the measures, which Alison Saunders then took on, but began the measures uh, which led to uh, so many false allegations against men because the victim had always to be believed. And indeed, you know, that initial uh, movement on the part of Starmer was what eventually led to farces like uh, Operation Midland. And I know people tend to forget that. I remember it. And finally, this. What have we heard from him this week? Uh, at a time when the NHS is in crisis, there are strikes all over the public sector, we have a war on in Ukraine, and all he could talk about from the dispatch box was the politics of personal destruction. Uh, in this case, it was Nadim Sadawi. Now, I believe that whatever else Rishi Shunak is right or wrong about, he is right to say innocent until proven guilty, not going to take measures uh, while there is an investigation going on, make that investigation very quick, and then take decisive action when you've got the results. Can't see anything wrong with that. But Starmer, Starmer, already at the dispatch box, wanted to brush aside any presumption of innocence, any need for a proper investigation, and just to go in like a bull in a china shop. Uh, well, look, uh, uh, Dennis, Dennis, perhaps Anne is so effusive, perhaps she's sweating because she knows deep what? down that Starmer will be our next Prime Minister. But how would you respond to what Anne has said about Keir Starmer? Well, it's, it's a lot of froth, isn't it? There's nothing concrete or yeah. substantial there. What Starmer's well, done, and I'm not necessarily his biggest fan. Oh, and I didn't interrupt you. What Please, we used to be right? courteous. You were courteous when you were in the House of Commons. Try it again. You, you, you'll enjoy life a lot more. Now, Stark Sakir is modernising, 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 recentering, recentering, recentering getting rid of all a lot of the old barnacles uh, that have been clinging, clinging to Labour for far too long, certainly in between after 2010 and up to 2020. Uh, and I think the people probably are liking what they are seeing. I mean, all the opinion polls suggest that. We haven't had any by-elections to actually uh, test it. And so I, 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 I think... You know, time for a change. It's how our democracy works. I mean, the Whigs didn't stay in power forever. Liberals didn't stay in power. Conservatives didn't stay in power forever. Tories have been in power now for 13 years. It's ended in farce in the small hours of this morning, frankly. Now, I don't blame Rishi Sunak in, in the way that some venomous Tories do. His real enemies are on the right, Mark. They're on GB News. They're not in the Labour Party. We are rather like him as Prime Minister. Let him stay there. It's just his sheer inexperience, his lack of political nous, his lack of a political nose, a smell. You say he'll go out for a drink with people. Well, he doesn't drink. He doesn't really go out with people. And when he does meet them, as we see in these, some of these stage stunt events, he seems very, very uncomfortable. He's a Magnificent golden bank, golden sacks, banker, hedge fund manager, multi billionaire, as you said, without the faintest idea of the life of the vast majority of middle class and other people in this country. So if he stays on as PM, and who knows? I mean, maybe Boris will try and oust him again because uh, he's got the loyalty of a sort of ferret on heat, old Boris, hasn't he? Uh, then I think um, he. Uh, uh, if he stays on, I'm afraid um, probably he's not going to be the prime minister in, in 18 months or 20 months' time. Uh, Anne, I've just got a couple of seconds left. Closing thoughts. Well, absolutely wonderful, isn't it? I mean, Starmer is praised for being like the senile old man in the White House and the prime minister is criticised because he doesn't drink. Never heard a politician before criticised because he doesn't drink. I'm sure far heard the opposite sometimes. 